Hey, Richard, since we have you here, what would you like to say a few words? There's, there must be a reason I'm here, right? <laughs> well, so it could be just your good looks being here and all, but... No, we, we know that's not the case. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, yeah, so the reason I'm here is because we have an upcoming free mini course uh, covering Azure, or excuse me, Entra certificate-based authentication. So uh, for the, your audience who may or may not know me, um, I am an independent consultant and I focus largely on two, uh, uh, two specific areas, secure remote access and digital certificates and PKI. And um, over the years in working with you know remote access, digital certificates and using certificates for authentication was always an excellent idea. They are a fantastic, uh, strong phishing resistant credential. And uh, it was about a year or so ago, somebody had reached out to me and said, hey, you know, Intra, Intra supports certificate based authentication. Can you help us deploy this? And so I started looking into this and then I, hey, this is fantastic and remarkably easily easy to set up. Now it gets really complex when you start putting policies in place and so forth. But one of the things that uh, Johan and I had a conversation about is, hey, this would make a great uh, kind of a free uh, course uh, on the Via Monstra Online Academy. So we're going to do that coming up in November. I think it was November 6th is what we decided on. And that is free. So we hope everybody registers and wants to come and, and learn about uh, Microsoft Entra certificate-based authentication and why it's awesome and why you might want or need to use it. That, perfect. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. Now, I uh, myself, I attended a session uh, in Switzerland recently. Correct. So, yes, the audience. I, yeah. So, we were both at the Workplace Ninja Conference in Switzerland uh, a month or so ago. Yeah. And I gave a talk on this. So, glad you sat through that and um, found it useful and informative uh, enough to share it with your audience because I think it's um, I think it's a it's a way to to really improve you know, your organization's security posture and really address some specific needs for meeting passwordless requirements, but doing so in a, in a scalable and effective cost effective manner. So I think that's uh, we're going to cover all that in the in the mini course in a couple of weeks or a month or so. And so I think it'll be um, I think it'll be real good. Yeah, no, I, that was on the Hector's road taking notes. Uh, something that that stood out to me was combining this with, with things like conditional access and stuff yes. like, oh, wait a minute, this is interesting. Yes. So yes. that's got my attention for sure. <laughs> All right. Same. I mean, yeah. I'm so, so used to dealing with passwords and so used to dealing yeah. with secrets, but I know certificates are something that we need to do. And Richard, you do a great job of making them less scary because uh, most people don't want to deal with managing certificates. Right. Well, you know what? Microsoft is really helping us there. So certificates mm -hmm. are, have been around for many, many years, and they are a fantastic credential, as I've mentioned before, because uh, they are passwordless, right? Because, the, you know, you can authenticate with a certificate without having to know the password with the associated account. account. Um, but but ultimately, you, what you're doing is you're choosing strong cryptography over the user's ability to select a strong password. So I'll take cryptography any day uh, in that regard. But ultimately, now there's this huge push towards passwordless, and and you know people naturally think of you know the FIDO tokens and stuff like that. And those are awesome. But I I I really believe that certificates have. A, a place in this conversation. And, and in fact, I think they, uh, especially at scale, have some real uh, positive benefits. Now, when you start talking certificates, people do tend to panic because they they imagine having to have some sort of certificate services infrastructure. And if you've had ADCS deployed and working, that's awesome. But when it doesn't work, that can be bad and people don't want to manage that. And this is where, again, as I mentioned before, Microsoft really helping us because Microsoft earlier this year introduced Cloud PKI for Intune. So now you don't even have to have any infrastructure. You can start issuing certificates quickly and easily. Uh, I did a talk about uh, Cloud PKI uh, for Intune at uh, the Workplace Ninja Conference as well and um, demonstrated that you can get this set up in short order and you you can be issuing certificates in a very secure way in a very robust and scalable and, and secure environment for which you don't have to manage at all 
and uh, now you can take advantage of this. And so uh, we'll cover all that in the in tune or in, in the mini course here coming up. And I think you'll find uh, in your audience will find that it's it's uh, there's some compelling reasons to consider it. And I think that uh, uh, the fact that uh, again we have cloud services for PKI now, so that kind of takes that burden off of the administrator. And one last thing that they have to worry about that uh, that they they may find that this this works out quite well for them. Well, uh, out out of curiosity, uh, are you completely out of stickers from the conference, or do you still have a few? <laughs> so you are you are referencing the stickers that I brought that says it's always DNS when it's not it's certificates. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. And yes. They were quite popular, and I gave most. Uh, I probably have a couple left. Um, I am planning to to print another run of those, so I'll make those available hopefully hopefully soon because they were quite popular. Did mine make it home with Johan? Uh, oh yeah, no, I don't think so. Unless, <laughs> oh. unless he grabbed an extra one. <laughs> Keep me in mind for the second run. <laughs> you bet. You bet. Uh, the rerun. All right. Andrew, good sir. What have you been up for the last seven days here? Uh, me, nothing. But the community, very busy. <laughs> uh, got a couple of things that I wanted to share today. Um, so you I can go share ahead your screen. And... That's what you're saying. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, first thing I had was a follow up from last week. Uh, David Segura had tweeted that OSD. Uh, the OSD PowerShell module had been updated to support 24H2, and now OSD Builder itself has been updated with initial support for Windows 11 24H2, which is awesome. Thank you, David, and anybody else that helped. I did notice um, in the tweet or in the thread here um, that updates are no longer using WSUS and are instead being pulled from the Microsoft Update Catalog um, directly. Uh, which was pretty interesting. And Dave mentioned a little bit about uh, that will allow updates to come down quicker and for some more customization in the future. So looks like there's some cool things to look uh, forward to here in the module as always. Um, another thing I came across, an uh, interesting article here from uh, over at the Patch My PC blog. Um, looks like Rudy Ohms wrote this. Uh, if you've ever seen this error here um, or this message, this app has been blocked by your system administrator. Uh, Rudy goes through some of the reasons that this could actually happen. Um, we have some obvious ones in there. If actually app blocker has been configured or Defender application control has been configured. Uh, but some other things that you may want to look into as well uh, if you run across this message. And sort of a... a Small but welcome update. Uh, I mentioned this to you, uh, Johan. You got the sneak peek on this on Monday. Um, Johan and I often talk about how in Microsoft 365, by default, your users can uh, self-service, purchase licenses, or start trials. Um, we're not personally the biggest fans of, uh, of that. Some others may be, and that's OK. Um, up until now, the only option that we've had to disable that is using the um, MS Commerce PowerShell module, which you can find right here on the PowerShell gallery. This allowed you to connect to the Commerce APIs and actually disable the self-service purchasing or trials that you wanted on a per uh, uh, service or application basis. Uh, but now, they have added this into, Microsoft has added this in to the M365 Admin Center, actually, uh, which I thought was a welcome change. Um, personally, more than more likely than not to do this through PowerShell, but I can think of plenty, plenty of organizations where perhaps you just want to manage this through the UI. This isn't something that changes often, but it does change throughout the years. And here is the UI uh, over in the M365 Admin Center org settings. We have a new self-service and trial, uh, uh, self-service trials and purchases option, and you can make these changes right in here for each one of these uh, pieces of software. Um, not only can you um, disable it entirely, you can also change this to allow trials only if that's something you want in your organization. 
Um, so that I thought that was a cool improvement uh, and wanted to share that today. Uh, but those were the few things that I had to share. All right. Um, I have uh, uh, at least one thing uh, that I wanted to share. Spend some time uh, this week and playing around with a few ARM devices that I had. And it was, uh, I, I blame Niall Brady on this one because he was tweeted about tweeting about some issues he was having with Hyper-V on ARM and was asking if anyone else had seen the, the problem after upgrading. I'm like, oh, heck, I have to try. So I upgraded three different uh, ARM hardware that I have running Hyper-V 2, Windows 11, 24H2, and started to poke around and see what I could find about it. Uh, first of all, I found a few new PowerShell commandlets that are, as far as I'm, no, they are completely undocumented, but they were there. Uh, I found out them using PowerShell by basically comparing all the parameters for all the commandlets. And there were a good chunk of them. And PowerShell is good that way. You can just show you those what's different. So I did that. Um, but also I learned that save state doesn't work. If you try to resume a VM that has been saved before the upgrade, it will simply tell you that, nope, your host is a completely different physical hardware. And will not restore. So you have to delete the state and you know bring it back up again. Uh, then I also learned that if I try to enable the virtual TPM chipset, which didn't work before 24H2, but if I did that on an existing VM, it would never boot again. But if I create a new VM with the same settings, enable the same TPM and boot it up, then it will work just fine. So long story short, recreate the VMs and, and life is good. Uh, solve that problem. Uh, but other than that, it, it was good. Also, Mark Andrew reached out and, and said that, you know what, Winnet is also supported now. Uh, I didn't even know it was missing, but it is supported in, in ARM64. So again, thank you there for, for, for letting me know. Community as it, at its uh, finest. But other than that, I'm starting to play around a bit more with uh, Windows 11 24 h 2 and hoping uh, not too much will be... Uh, not working so far. It's looking quite good, but uh, been in the industry long enough. It usually takes a few more months to until all the quirks are found and you know fixed. So recommend not putting this in production like all the machines right now. Uh, but it's definitely ready to start playing around and test with. So I recommend doing that. Mm -hmm.